Hi everyone, it's Julia. Surprise! Unless you follow me on Twitter, in which case, good on you because that's the only way you've been keeping up with me for a year. That or Instagram or Goodreads. It's been a few months since I've tried to film anything, but it's been a full year since I filmed and edited and posted something. In fact, I'm pretty sure my last video was the mid-year book freakout tag. Was I right? Um, in which case, thank you all who voted on Twitter and appreciate dramatic irony as much as I do. Um, as you can see, I'm wearing a nice cute shirt to show off my sunburn to you all, and I'm ready to talk about books. Like, I don't even have excuses about where I've been for the last year. Busy. Sorry. I missed you all. Let's talk books. I wrote down all the questions in my cute little Winnie the Pooh notebook. Um, also, yes, <laughs> it's like hotter than blazes upstairs in my house, and yet I still lit a candle for the aesthetic, so you're welcome. This was all I could give you guys because I have a vaulted ceiling on both sides of my room, so it's like you can't really put a lot on the walls and you really don't want to see my messy clothes rack, so it's all you get. Okay, enough rambling. Let's get into this. Ah, I'm so excited to talk about books. Okay. The first question is, what is the best book you've read so far in 2019? And that answer for me is The Diviners by Libba Bray. I have read a lot of great books this year so far. I've given out more than one five star, which I'm pretty picky, so like that's pretty cool. Um, and some very, very near five stars. But I think the one that's going to have the most longevity with me and was a full five stars is The Diviners. I'm not even going to say any more about it because we're just going to move on and then talk about it more in some other questions. So if you don't know what The Diviners is, um, <laughs> you should. You should just read it and find out. It's like 1920s, ghosty stuff, crazy group of kiddos. I just love it all. Uh, murder. Woo! So fun. Okay. Question two is the best sequel you've read so far. And for me, that is The Girl in the Tower by Katherine Arden, which is the second book in the Winter Night Trilogy, which just... Both the first two books have gotten five out of five stars for me. So, like, I don't even know how to describe it. It's about, like, Russian folklore, and it has low fantasy elements, but it's historical, and it's, like, feminist, and it's just beautiful. Catherine Arden could write literally anything, and I would read it. Her prose is just beautiful. Okay, question three is what new releases do you want to read? For me, I have two big standouts. One of them is one that I actually just went out and purchased full price, so you know I mean business, and that is Midsummer's Mayhem by... Rajani LaRocca, I think. I probably could not have pronounced that name any more whitely than I just did. Um, that and one of my birthday presents, Red, White, and Royal Blue by Casey McQuiston. I think that's the name. Um, both of them look so cute, so sweet. I've heard nothing but wonderful things about each of them. Um, actually, it's funny, Red, White, and Royal Blue was a birthday present from Jocelyn from Yogi with a Book, and then um, Midsummer's Mayhem, I'm going to buddy read with her, so it's the circle of life. Moving on. Question number four is most anticipated book releases for the rest of the year. I don't know what's wrong with me. I feel like I've been just kind of out of the loop or very lukewarm about a lot of books coming out. Um, I do have a couple arcs <laughs> that I'm really excited about. Um, I'll show you those. Actually, we're going to be seeing these a lot. I have, this is not the real cover, Inland by Taya Orbit, I think is how you pronounce her name. Um, she wrote The Tiger's Wife, which I haven't read, but, you know, you see it a lot. Um, I read, like, the first 
15 pages of this earlier today and I'm like, oh, it's gonna be good. So I'm really excited about that. I have more. Uh, the Guinevere Deception. Oh, sorry, she's so shiny. Um, by Kirsten White. Again, thank you, Jocelyn. You make my dreams come true. Um, we all know I'm a hoe for Kirsten White. I love everything that she does. That's not true. I haven't read all her books, but I really enjoy everything of hers that I've read. So I'm very hopeful about this. I have started it also. Again, I'm only like 30 pages in because um, I paused to do a buddy read. But um, also looking forward to this. There's something else. Oh, I gotta go find it. Um, no, I'm not gonna go digging for it. I have the sequel to Grim Lovelies, which is called Midnight Beauties, which is by Megan Shepard, who I also love. My brain was like, you stan her. And I was like, don't say stan, that's dumb. So I do love Megan Shepard though. Her first series, uh, ooh, what are they called? I'm blanking on the name for some reason, but something about madness, darkness. It's like gothic lit retellings, so love it. And then her other series, The Cage, just ripped my heart out in a thousand ways. And I don't read sci-fi. You guys know I don't read sci-fi, but that's a book about aliens, so you know she did good. Um, so there's that. Also Meg Cabot has another book coming out. I think she has like a novella and a full book. I film, I'm filming on my phone, so I can't look up the name. But whatever Meg Cabot writes, I will read it. That is my mission in life. As you can tell, I'm very loyal to all my favorite authors. Okay, what's next? <sighs> Question number five, biggest disappointment. Okay, I'm going to give just a quick roll call of some honorable mentions. Sadie, I don't get the hype, didn't even make me cry, and I am a crier, so I don't know. Quests for Glory, so Manchenani, why? Why? Why everything? Um, oh, A Study in Charlotte. Thought I was going to love it. I didn't like it so much. I'm going to keep my copy because it's signed. And I think I'll try to continue the series, but I'm very reluctant. But the most disappointing book of 2019 so far, there's time for more disappointments, ooh, is The Dead Queen's Club by Hannah Capen. This book on paper should have been perfect for me. It's a modern day feminist Tudors retelling. So it's about like Henry VIII and his six wives. So like my brain was like, we love it, we want it. This is the kind of contemporary that we crave. And it was just a hot mess. The pacing did not exist. The plot was either not thought through or very poorly planned because it was jumping from like fluffy romance to straight up murder mystery to like this weird like journalism. I don't know. It was, there was a lot going on and I just don't get it. Like it was very well researched and I think I would give her books another chance. It just let me down so hard, and I do have a full review for this one on Goodreads, so if you're curious to know all the tea, it's linked down below. Sorry, I keep looking at my hair because it's supposed to be flipping this way, but it's flipping this way. <laughs> like I have little wings. <laughs> Question number six is biggest surprise. I'm reluctant to say this, but I'm going to give it to the book that I'm currently reading which is behind me. It's Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler. I have heard very mixed things about this book and I was going into it with low expectations. If we're going to be real, I bought it because it was cheap used and I liked the cover and I was just kind of curious. Her writing is so good. Like it's beautiful, beautiful writing. Like I have felt anxious with our main character and I've felt like 
the full gamut of all her emotions and it's so like engrossing and atmospheric when she's talking about food which she works in a restaurant so like we're talking about food a lot and I just it's good I'm very pleasantly surprised don't know how it's gonna end so I'm like eh, I still have like maybe 80 pages left or so um but we'll see the next question is new favorite authors I just jotted down a couple names um Emily Henry for one again beautiful writing let's add Stephanie Dandler to the list I'm reluctant to say Libra Bray because I have tried to read A Great and Terrible Beauty like three or four times and this is like since I was maybe in eighth grade like even young Julia just could not deal with it so I don't know if it's just that series or maybe like her newer works will agree with me better than her older stuff but I really did love The Diviners so I'm like maybe Libra Bray and I'm also going to add Sarah Rule who is a playwright I read her play In the Next Room or the Vibrator play um, and it like she's just so feminist and I love the way she writes things and her characters seem so real so I'm very intrigued to read more of her plays. Question number eight is newest fictional crush and here's the thing I read that question and I was like I don't do that anymore I'm 26 and then I scrolled down the list of books that I read this year and I was like remember Jericho though? I don't know what he does in later books because Jocelyn is like, ooh, really? Do you like Jericho though? So I'm nervous, but right now I love him. He's tall, he's awkward and endearing. He once tried to take Evie on a date to the library, which is goals. I love him. Even his little like tragic backstory thing, I'm like, it doesn't phase me at all. So yeah. I'm also gonna give an honorable mention can you believe it I have two for this question um Luke from Percy Jackson I read the lightning thief after seeing the musical and well really I was crushing on him in the musical so that like transferred to the book but <sighs> okay the next question is newest favorite character I, well, all the kiddos from the Diviners, I love them all equally. That's like, I still haven't read Six of Crows, but I feel like it's that same kind of like group dynamic thing where it's like, I love you all for different reasons and you're just like this big old bunch of people I want to protect. Um, and also, what's her name? Jane from Dread Nation. I loved Dread Nation so much. I can't wait for the sequel. <gasps> Is that coming out this year? Add that to my most anticipated. Um, and Jane was just fabulous. I love her. Love everything about her. Okay, moving on. Okay, we're gonna lift up the notebook because here's where we have to start reading. Um, books that made me cry. I literally went through and made a list. A Million Junes by Emily Henry. Tiffany Sly Lives Here Now by Dana L. Davis. The Girl in the Tower by Katherine Arden. The Lovely Bones by Alice Sebold. Oh. <laughs> um, it was a reread, but Othello by William Shakespeare. Archie Volume 5, because it was delivering the content I've been waiting for. And then I put a question mark next to Radio Silence because I can't remember actually crying. But I did, like, have all the feels. So, there we go. Likewise, I'm going to read for the next question, books that made me happy. The Secret Garden was so cute. Same for Furthermore. And I put Archie Volume 5 again because, oh, the gratification. Um, so basically, like, middle grade makes me happy. Okay, two more questions. Number 12, most beautiful books that I've acquired this year. I've made a nice little stack here next to me. Um, first, we have a couple of cover buys I got at Barnes & Noble. The Grief Keeper by Alexandra Viasante. Oh my goodness. Barely Missing Everything by Matt Mendez. Wow, that color scheme though. I already showed you this one or mentioned this one. Midsummer's Mayhem by 
for Johnny La Roca. I mean, look at the flora. It's got little baked goods. This little sweetheart. Oh, I love it. Um, we saw this one, but the Guinevere Deception is so freaking shiny, but like actually has like gold detailing that you can't even tell. This one too, Inland by Taya Orbet. Um, this is not, this is the final cover is this part, which is so pretty. Again, and I really like these like sunset colors right now. And one that I went out of my way to purchase via Book Depository just so I could get the UK cover that I'm obsessed with. The Silence of the Girls by Pat Barker. Like, look at that. Ugh. I love printmaking. <laughs> That's what it's called. I'm like, stamps. I love stamps. It's oh, so gorgeous. Um, so it's just a pile of beautiful books. Apparently I really like neutrals and purples. That's the color scheme for this year. Okay. The final question is books that I need to read by the end of the year. I mean, I'm going to give the dumb answer that everyone gives and be like, all of my TBR. <laughs> it's true. Um, but also I have a list because I've been working on a project that I filmed, but I don't think I ever uploaded, which is to read the oldest books from my Goodreads TBR that I own. And I've been reading one every month. And so far, the girl's on track. I did finish The Virgin Suicides a little bit into June instead of May, but I finished it. Um, Broken Monsters down here is my current audiobook, and that is June's book. And the rest of those books for the year are as follows. Every Day, um, Brooklyn, The Girl on the Train, Gone Girl, Outlander, Longburn. That's it. I can count. Um, and then just an honorable mention to Broken Throne, because Victoria Aveyard is my queen. Like, I know, I know you guys have your issues with the Red Queen series. I get it. I have my issues with it too. But also, Victoria Aveyard owns my soul. Okay, um, outro. You guys, I'm really excited to have filmed this, and I want to heartily thank all of you who have not unsubscribed from my channel in the last 12 months, because literally the majority of you have not, and I don't know why. I even got some new followers while I wasn't making anything, so like think why did I do this I clearly I'm overheating up here but yeah thank you all so much for watching and please leave a comment about literally anything like talk about books tell me what you want to eat for dinner like I don't care I want to talk to you guys I miss you all um Please do follow me. I don't know why I'm holding this pen like a tiny baton. Please do follow me on Twitter and or Goodreads and Instagram because I actually use those consistently and you won't have to miss me that way. Um, but also, thanks for watching and I'm really excited to be making videos again and you will see more of me soon. That's a promise. Bye!